so uh, this was successful because my aunt was diagnosed at the time. Oh, I see. And, and I said to Strecker, I said, why don't we just give her this machine? And of course, Bob Strecker, you know, was game for anything. And he says, fine, give it to her. Mm -hmm. And I said, and then she can dial whatever she wants to dial, and she could do it at home or do whatever. And she had a thyroid problem of some kind, where the thyroid had died or something, and they weren't sure what it was. And, and of course, Aunt Dorothy is the type that, you know, if you tell her, here, just do this and do that, then she'll just do all the experiments on her own. Mm -hmm. And so we gave her the machine. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, this lump appeared, which was down by her thyroid. Hmm. And uh, she went into the hospital to have it removed. Well, they still got the lump, Jeff, because they don't know what happened to it. They cannot figure out to this day. Hmm. It was just like how whatever was wrong with her now is totally crystallized. Mm -hmm. And we just removed it and they study it. Hmm. It's just, a, a, you know, something that they removed and, of course... So you're saying it accreted into a lump? Yeah. And then it was somehow... Yeah, a crystallized the, lump. And that was it. Wow. About the size of a... Maybe a little bit bigger than a pigeon egg. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, of course, then they just cut it right out. But the pathologist said, geez, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything so burnt in my whole life. And this came right from her yeah, body it, like that. Yeah, it came right from her body like uh, that. And, uh, and you know, it's well documented. I mean, <laughs> Drecker knew about it. And, and, of course, he just sort of smiled and went off on his way. And he says, well, he said to me one day, he says, I think we're making some progress, he said, at learning what this thing is. Because we're going to get into this in a minute, and it's going to get, it's going to get to where we can actually figure out what Rife did. And and I and I know that this BCX machine and a couple others can do this. Okay, very good. We've got and a break so, coming up uh, right now, John, so hold okay. on. And let me just bring everyone up today. We're talking with scientist John Bedini about the uh, work of Royal Raymond Rife and how John and his associates, Dr. Robert Strecker and Tom Bearden, worked on uh, the relics of Rife's wizardry and began to assemble their own approach and how it is now understood pretty much exactly how Rife's genius worked. And it is something else. So stay tuned. All right, uh, let's go ahead and, and see where this goes. Now, all of you, hopefully by now, have been able to get to Rents.com and have seen John Bedini's name in Guests and taken the link that is there, and you're on his page. If not, please do so, because we're going to start looking at some some images. Yes, we are. <laughs> so we're going to do that right this moment. So if we go to the top of the page, Jeff, uh, you see four pictures that start out the page, and it's... It, it says underneath them, interferometer mix before the transmitter. Right. Okay, this is an interferometer, which is a phase mixing inter <coughs> excuse me, interferometer. 
barometer. Can you, you can, can you, see. let's, John, excuse me, let's give a try at defining, if we can, in, in real simple, understandable terms, interferometer. Okay. It's, just, it's a tough one, but. Uh, well, let's go down to the center of the page. All the way down to the center? Yeah, and you'll see a simple interferometer. There it in is. Black and white. Almost halfway down, it's a drawing, and it says underneath it, a ah. simple interferometer. Okay. Right. Now, see, there's a source, and then there's two slits there. See it? Yep. And see what it's doing? The light goes through, and they interfere with each other. You see what's happening there? Yeah, I so see. You get a bright spot, a dark spot, a bright spot, a dark spot. So okay. all these waves are intermixing, and like ones are canceling out and creating a dark spot. I see. So as the light source from the left moves from left to right, what are the two vertical lines? What would those signify? The two vertical lines? Mm -hmm, those that, two. Where it says S? Yeah. That's the source. Okay. That's the source wave. See it? So, so the whole, okay, the source wave itself is contained within those two vertical right. demarcations, and then it moves through what kind of an outlet? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going through two phased outlets there. Okay. See? All right. So uh, basically when I say interferometer, what I want to do is an interferometer is the same thing that creates a laser hologram. Hmm. In other words, a picture in 3D. Mm -hmm. So basically, if, 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 if we were using sound instead of light here, you would have a 3D sound. In other words, you would think it was 3D. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So w w how this is accomplished is if we go back up to the page, the very you know, first set of pictures. Go right up to the top, and those are what they look like. They're, they're, well, they're four monitors, if you will. Yes. And the top left picture looks like a uh, donut. donut. Right. All right. So, you know, well, what I've done here is I've taken one frequency and I've taken, taken its phase mm -hmm. and I've altered it, you know, four or five different ways mm -hmm. in this interferometer. Mm -hmm. And then I've taken another frequency and altered it four or five. And then I've mixed it together and what appears here is a donut. Mm-hmm. To show you that that what the interferometer is capable of doing. Now, if we go to the next picture to the right, okay, mixing two yeah, frequencies mixing at one time. Yeah, mixing two frequencies at one time. You can mm -hmm. see there's a, one fundamental frequency out there, but then there's this little frequency in the center, and you see it. Yep. It's like ringing inside there. Mm -hmm. So we're we're. What we're able to do is we're able to take this thing, mix the frequencies in the correct phase, mm -hmm. and then send them to the Rife unit. So all our frequencies are already mixed. You see, now we add more frequencies and we go into this four-way of mixing. See? Mm -hmm. And you got a box that looks like a circle at the top and a circle at the side and a circle at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So that's giving you an indication, and that mix there is probably real high in frequency because of the phasing on this. Now, if you move to the next picture, here's two fundamental frequencies inside each wave. So in other words, I've put the master frequency inside the carrier frequency. See, the carrier frequency is that big one on the outside. Uh-huh. And the frequency that I really want to focus on is on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then if I go down to the next picture, mm -hmm. you see, I added a pump wave signal to it, which is this DC pump wave. Okay. And I'm pumping this wave, which is, by the way, the same wave that is in the fourth picture that we just looked at. Okay. All right, and then if I go and I tell the interferometer, let's do a spatial dimension, 